Hi, R.D. Barry here. Welcome to part two of my um, discussion on uh, the uh, golden ratio base or finary. Um, well, let's see. I first of all, I've what I've done here is I put all the uh, the first. Uh, I don't know exactly how many uh, uh, numbers into uh, base five. What I've done is one cell is in each digit, and just to make the one stand out a little bit better, I've uh, formatted it so the zeros are hidden. They're still in the cell. You can see right there that it's actually in the cell if I click on it, but. Uh, Otherwise, it's hidden. Just so the because what we really care about is the ones there. Um. So and and it, when you put them all in a in a all together like this, there there are a few patterns that stick out. First of all, um, if we look at the to the right of the decimal point, the decimal point is right there to the right of column A A. There, I just uh just know that. There's one, so I know the decimal point is just to the right of that. Um, in the next column, all the ones occur in just just by themselves, and in the column after that, they occur in triples, and in the column after that, they occur in quadruples, in the column of that, they occur in sets of seven. And the column after that, they occur in sets of 11. And so on. Now, what is that sequence? 1, 3, 4, 7, 11, and so on. Well, it turns out to be something called the Lucas system, or Lucas system, uh, uh, sequence, um, L U C A S. Uh, it's not pronounced Lucas. So that's if that's the Star Wars guy. Uh, this is a French mathematician, so you call him uh, Luca. Um, anyway, it follows the same rule as the Fibonacci sequence. It just it just starts out with two different uh, different numbers. So this one starts one three, but after that. You get four by adding one and three, and then seven by adding three and four, and then eleven by adding four and seven, and so on. So you can always predict how the length of the sequence of ones in each column to the right of the decimal point. To the left of the decimal point, there's something similar going on. There's ones in the first, just single ones in the first column. And then pairs in the second column, and then pairs again in the third column, and then quintuples in the uh, fourth column, and now sextuples in the fifth column. And this pattern is a little bit more difficult to uh, figure out, but if you compare it with the Luca uh, sequence uh, we talked about just just a minute ago. They they are always just one away from one of the uh, numbers in the Luca, Luca system. So this is um, this is twelve, which is one away from eleven, and five is one away from four, or six is one away from uh, seven. Five is one away from four. Three is one away from, or two is both is one away from three and two. So that's why you get two in a row there. And uh, the one there, the previous entry in the Luca uh, sequence is two, and one is is one away from two. So there's a pattern there, and they, there's similar patterns for the lengths of the gaps between these ones. But in this case, there's two uh, possible lengths. Um, for example, here, uh, for the second column to the right of the uh, ones place, there's the columns are length uh, four and um, eight. 
here I've got four, here I've got an eight. But you see they don't actually repeat. There's two, only two possible values, but they kind of go in a, a pattern that seems to repeat after a while, but then never does just get around to repeating. It's, um, it's like periodic, but not quite. Um, there's a technical term called quasi-periodic. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure that applies here, but uh, that's um, that's what it is. And the similar sorts of things happen on to the left of the uh, that's to the left of the ones column. Here I get columns length or runs of length three and two. Here I get lengths of uh, runs of length five and two, and so on. So there's lots of interesting patterns to see, and it's really difficult to um, to uh, really uh, list all of them and prove all of them, but they are kind of evident just from looking at it. So um, lots of lots of interesting things to discover there. Um, so what I want to do is once. Uh, now that we've seen kind of what the pattern is there, I want to just go into how you do, uh, you actually do arithmetic in uh, this this base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new spreadsheet, a new sheet. Um, there we go. Uh, make this the cells a little bit smaller because I don't. The only there's only going to be zero and one in there, so I don't need a very big sheet or a very big uh, uh, cells in there. And um, let's start talking about arithmetic. Um, now, with any base, the rules for addition are um, actually not that. Difficult. Same with some of the the other. The uh, same with the other uh, operations. What you really need is a rule for uh, carry and uh, borrow. So when I put let's uh, let's just start with adding one and one here. So I'm going to put a one and a one, and I'm going to um, and what I'm going to do. For this cell, is just put in the entire the sum of the of the columns above here. We'll see how that works in a minute. And uh, let's exp expand that out that way and that way. So what I want to do is there's rules for carry. So the the ba the basic thing is you just add each the digits in each column to get you a new column, and uh, then you apply rules of carry and borrow to get um, something that that's in the form you want. Now with base two, the rule is that all the digits have to be either zero or one, and you have to apply carry and borrow rules uh, to get the digits to follow that rule. And the carry and borrow rule is that um, I'm going to put the uh, put the numbers 1 and minus 2 here. That says that uh, that anytime I have a digit over here, a, a 1 over here and a negative 2 there, I can just add that because uh, my base B, uh, base B is is 10 in base B, and it's also equal to 2. So if I subtract those, I get 0. That says 1 point or 1 and then negative 2 makes 0. So all the carry and borrow rules, what they basically do is um, they add 0 in uh, in a way to that uh, gets the uh, the result into the uh, form that I want. So what I'm going to do here it, to get in base two, 
I'm going to copy that and just paste it into that column there or into that row and see this is just adding zero so my sum and now my result is in the form that I want so that's uh, uh, 1 plus 1 equals uh, 1 0 point 0. Okay um, so that's like a quick review of what happens in base 2. Something similar happens in base 10 as you probably remember from uh, elementary school. Uh, with base phi, uh, there's a new equation here for what for something that's equal to zero, and the equation is um, that the number the base squared is equal to the base plus one. So it's basically saying that uh, 1.1 base phi is equal to phi squared. Now let's, we're just going to call that kind of the fundamental equation of the base. For the um, for base two, it was just uh, x equals or b, uh, b minus two equals zero. For base phi, it's phi squared minus phi minus one equals zero. So let's see how I can use this new version of my fundamental equation to get the um, the uh, the the see the my digit sequence into the right form. Now, first of all, I have to say what the right form is. In base phi, you you can only have digits uh, zero and one, like in binary. But in addition, there's a there's a, a another rule that says you can't have two ones in a row. So every one has got to be followed by a zero. Only zero and ones can exist. And as long as you have those two things holding, then you're fine. So right now I've got a two, which means I've got a number which is a digit which is greater than one. So I need to do a carry, but see, I can't do a carry yet because um, that would result in a negative digit there. So what I want to do first is do a borrow. So I do a borrow here by subtracting. So that, so that, so I, instead of adding zero, I subtracted zero, same effect. And now that I have two ones in a row, I can carry the uh, carry those two ones over to the next digit. So I'm going to add those. And that gives me the 10.01 that we found in the previous episode. Um, Let's do a little something a little bit more ambitious here. Let's do um, two plus two equals four. So let's do one. So two is one zero point zero one. And copy that. And let's put my uh, addition row in here. So now I've got another, I've got a two here, so that means I'm on a carry, but I can't carry right away because I don't have a, uh, I need a uh, something greater than zero in that place. So I'm going to do a borrow here. Um, that's borrowed a digit from borrowed a one from that and and we'll, and added it to the previous two digits and now I can carry the one and one to give me a one in this place so now this that carries over and now I can carry again here um, and I'm gonna need more space in there Uh, let's see, let's expand that out a bit. So 
So now I've got 101.01. 0, 1. So there's there's my 2 plus 2 equals 4. And if I go back to my um, my table here, sure enough, 4 is is 101.01. 1, 0, 1. 0, 1. Um, let's do a um, subtract. Uh, let's just take a random. Well, let's let's pick a uh, pick some numbers in here. Let's say uh, seventeen. Um. Let me uh, clear the formatting so I get the zeros in there. And um, and uh, let's see. Um, let's do seventeen minus ten. So there's ten, and it starts one over from the uh, seventeen. And I'm going to it's because it's I'm subtracting. I'm just going to subtract those digits there, and let's put in a uh, row for my sums. See now I've got uh, lots of negatives in the uh, in the result here, and I, so what I need to do is do a lot of borrowing um, to get the everything between 0 and 1. So let's see here. Let's um, and let's see I think I'm gonna need a little bit more space here because I added a lot more stuff here. Uh, okay. So let's um, let's see. We want to get rid of these two negative ones there. So let's borrow from that one there. Um, and now that I've got one there, I can borrow from that. And now I've got a one there. I can borrow from that. And now I've got now I've got a carry to do. So let's do a carry. So, so I turn those one two ones in a row into a single one. Now I've got a now I have a still have a negative one there. So I'm going to do a borrow there. And now I've got two ones in a row again. So I need to do a carry. And um, I just have one negative one left to go, so I'm going to put a do another borrow. And finally, I've got two ones in a row, so I'm going to do another carry. So you can see there's a lot more carries and borrows than there were uh, in binary. Um, just adding, just subtracting two numbers, I had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carries and borrows. Um, unlike subtracting in a, a whole number base, you sometimes have to do uh, carries when you borrow when you subtract. And uh, up here, you sometimes some sometimes had to do um, borrows when you're adding. So that's a bit different. Um, but that's kind of the gist of what you need to do. You do the, you calculate each sum, uh, kind of the normal way, and then you apply these new rules, uh, to say, okay, well, I need only numbers between 0 and 1. I need, um, uh, every 1 has a 0 after it, and... I use this magic uh, formula here, x squared uh, equals x plus 1, to do the carries and borrows. And sure enough, everything seems to work out um, 
fine there. Uh, they seem to get always get a result, and um, things uh, seem to work out uh, just right. Um, now for multiplication, well, let's let's do um, two times two. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a 2. Now 2 is really 10 times. Uh, so I'm going to multiply uh, this 2 and then I multiply it by 10 and then divide it by, uh, then multiply it by 0 0.01 and then add those uh, two uh, products together. So to multiply by 10, I just shift it over 1. And to multiply by 0 0.01, I shift it over by the other direction by 2. So that will be the result of 2 times 2. Hopefully I'll get uh, this 101.01 uh, .01 in the end, but we'll see. I'm going to put my sums in there. I don't think I'm going to use that many borrow or carries and borrows this time. So I add the add up the columns, I get 1002001. Let's get my uh carry and borrow thing here. So in, in order to get the 2 in order to carry for the two, I need to borrow first. So let's do that. And now I can b carry the one and one to get this column, or to get the, the next digit there. And finally, I can um, I can carry these two ones over to that there. And sure enough, that, that gives me the same uh, result I had before. So it's nice to know that we get uh, the it, the answer looks funny, but at least two plus two is equal to two times two, like we expect. Um, and that's kind of the way multiplication goes. It's, it's a lot like bi binary. Uh, Binary multiplication would work um, something similar to this. Um, it would just be a little bit uh, less, uh, a little bit simpler. Okay, well, I was gonna do uh, a division example, but uh, that that gets uh, kind of involved, and uh, so what I think I'll what I'll what I think I'll do is just. Uh, leave that for you to figure out for yourself. Um, it's basically just repeated subtraction like you learned in school uh, for long division, but um, with these new uh, carry and borrow rules. Um, so um, the only thing that I wanted to do uh, after that is uh, square roots, uh, particularly square root of 5. Um, other square roots are more difficult, but square root of 5, it turns out to be particularly easy in this space. And the reason is because um, my base is equal to square root of 5 plus 1 over 2. So if my base is equal to 10, that's square root of 5 plus 1 divided by 2. So I multiply by that by 2. That's the square root of 5 plus 1. And now I just subtract 1. And now I apply my carry and borrow rule. So let's put uh, my sum there. I think I'm only going to need... One bar, one borrow, and one carry. Oh, actually, I just gonna I'm just gonna need one borrow. So I've got a negative one. I need to borrow 
from that too. And I just get 10.1. So in this base, uh, square root of 5 is just 10.1. Uh, very nice. No uh, infinite uh, non uh, repeating decimal with no pattern to it. Just uh, this simple little expression 10.1. And to verify that, just as another exercise in multiplication, let's multiply this by itself to make sure that we do in fact get 5. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this, first of all multiply it by 10, so that means shifting it over 1. And then multiply it by 0.1. So I multiply by or shift it over by 1 the other direction. Uh, make my column row or my sum row here. And apply my uh, carry and borrow rule. So um, grab that. I'll, I'll borrow from the 2 to get a, a non-zero number there. And I'll carry the 1 and 1 over here. And I'll carry this 1 and 1 over here. And finally, let's borrow from that 2. And now I can carry the 1 and 1 over here. Whoops. Needed to expand that just a bit more there. There. So now I get 1000.1001, 0, 0, 0. 0. 0, 1, which if I compare that with my table, one zero zero point one zero one zero 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 point one zero zero one is row five, so that's five. So I do when I multiply those two two together, I do get um, five. So um, anyway, I'm going to uh, wrap it up a kind of there. Uh, one thing I want to talk about uh, just in general is um, what happens with um, non-whole uh, numbers uh, like uh, one half, one third, etc. Um, when fractions don't come out evenly, just like in decimal, you get um, you get repeating uh, did a repeating sequence of digits uh, that works for any rational number um, so in that sense it's very similar to what happens in uh, a, a whole number base uh, but you also get these uh, odd um, square root uh, expressions that that come out evenly so it's it's it um, the 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 rational numbers come out um, longer, but uh, no, not not any, not in any sense worse than in general uh, than, than than a whole number base. And you get additional um, you, di you get additional square roots in there. You don't get every square root, but you do get uh, square root of five and uh, multiples of the square root of five. So um, anyway, uh, the the co the cost for that though is you have to do all this extra work when you're doing arithmetic. So in that sense, it's not really that that practical, but uh, it, I do find it interesting that it does kind of uh, work out this way that you can get uh, a at least re uh, uh, repeating patterns there when you do a rational number. Anyway, I'm going to write it, uh, wrap it up there. This is the last um, 
episode I'm going to do on base phi. Uh, what I'm going to do for the next episode is probably talk about other uh, types of bases. There are different uh, things you can do with whole number bases that uh, they don't usually cover in, uh, in uh, school. Uh, there are other irrational bases that that work uh, similar to this, not quite the same, but similar. Uh, and it turns out to be there's a lot of inform a lot of uh, interesting things that happen. So um, hopefully you'll join me. Um, and until then, I'll say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>